this paper is a look at our first 107 patients that we saw in our post-COVID clinic. And we looked at demographic features of the patients, including age, gender, ethnicity, as well as pre-existing conditions and how post-COVID had affected them. I am Ravindra Ganesh. I'm one of the general medicine doctors here at the Mayo Clinic. I'm also the medical director of the post-COVID care clinic. Today, I would like to introduce our article, which will be coming out in the March 2022 edition of Mayo Clinic Proceedings, entitled, The Female Predominant Persistent Immune Dysregulation of the Post-COVID Syndrome. We were able to group patients into several clinical phenotypes with very similar symptoms. And we also found that there were more women than men in our cohort. While it's a small sample, this ratio of approximately three women to every one man is similar to that seen in other chronic illnesses such as fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and some autoimmune disorders. When we looked at our patients' lab work, a lot of it was relatively normal, but we found that interleukin-6 was elevated in most of our patients, particularly those with particular symptoms, including fatigue, orthostasis, and myalgia. What we believe that this means is that there is an immune dysregulation on a cellular level that occurs after COVID in patients with persistent symptoms, and this may be the central underlying theme in other post-viral disorders. So in figure one here, we show our distribution of IL-6 in these patients by clinical phenotype. And as mentioned, there were differences in IL-6 level by what symptoms patients had. As you can see here, the folks with myalgia had the greatest spread and the greatest level of IL-6, while the patients who had chest pain and dyspnea were more in the normal range. What we concluded, um, as shown in figure two, is that based on a review of the literature, we think that patients may be developing a central sensitization disorder after COVID. When we think about central sensitization disorders, we think about three distinct processes. One, there is some amount of genetic susceptibility that occurs, and there are very strong candidate genes associated with this. Secondly, there is a personality type um, that makes it more likely to develop central sensitization disorders. And this is often comorbid with anxiety or other psychiatric disorders. And lastly, there's a sensitization event, which is often a very big stressor. And in the case of our post-COVID patients, it's almost always having had COVID. Now, in these central sensitization disorders, people's brains start to amplify certain signals that wouldn't normally be there. And people start to have odd sensations called paresthesias. Some of these are not really well understood, including the one of the more famous ones recently has been internal vibrations. And we at the Mayo Clinic are continuing to work to understand what is going on with these patients. What we're doing with our clinic is we're working predominantly on a rehabilitative approach for our patients, trying to find out if there are any diseases that can be treated and for the ones that they have, how best to support them on a symptomatic individualized basis. As we learn more about the disease process, we are hoping to roll out small trials to investigate whether there are therapeutics that may be beneficial to these individuals. And we will post these on clinicaltrials.gov and offer them to our patients as we go forward. For more details, please read our article. Again, it's coming out in the March 2022 issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. And this is Dr. Ravindra Ganesh. Thank you.
We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.